So, the episode starts and, oh my god, what the fuck is that? Actual serpentine fucking snake horse. Genuine demon spawn, look at this shit. Oh wait, I had the camera on the wrong place. There we go. Bone chilling, isn't it? Okay. I really love the overdramatic expressions and performance by Glim and Trixie in this scene. I love how as soon as Glimmer finishes her line, she defaults back to a smug smirk. And of course, Trixie is fantastic as usual. You two have a real chemistry. I was considering riddling the script with shipfag jokes, but that seems like low-hanging fruit. Also, Trixie is straight. Fuck you. Sunshine, sunshine, ladybugs awake. Clap your hooves and do a little shake. <laughs> this is the rest of your family reacting as you interact with your Tulpa. They're worried about you. They don't understand how deep you're in. Go call your mom and tell her you love her. Anyways, then the intro plays and reminds you that this episode does, in fact, take place during season 8. Just in case you wanted to have some fun or enjoy yourself. <laughs> As I love my one pony show, it's always nice to come to Ponyville and perform with my great and powerful assistant. You will never, you never, you never, 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 Anyways, Starlight leaves and Hoof R asks Trixie to bless his homeland with her presence which is probably the only time I relate to him in the entire episode. Well, other than the fact that he is also tall, skinny, and wears disgusting stained clothing. Of course. I am extremely fucking jealous of the fact that his homeland is actually graced by Trixie's presence, when mine never will be, but that's besides the point. Just kidding brothers. Stay optimistic. The portal will be constructed. Hoof R offers Trixie his wagon in exchange for hers and Trixie proceeds to spurg out over why she loves her wagon so much, which makes sense once you consider she worked hard to buy it, presumably at the rock farm and that was after spending all of her money on the Alicorn amulet. Also, for all the people who say Trixie is a weak unicorn who uses stage tricks to make herself seem like a better magician, or the people who say Trixie is basically a unicorn cripple in later seasons, her levitation is powerful enough to carry herself, which is not a common feat. From my memory, which might be wrong. I think Glimmer is the only other one to do so. Sometimes they accidentally use Trixie's old eyelashes on her model and every time I see it it just makes me miss them more. Anyways, after Hofar claims that Trixie has many fans in Pony Oil Land, Trixie goes back to Starlight's office and 1. is super cute, and 2. Begs Starlight to join her so she doesn't have to walk across like a million miles of country all alone. Starlight as anyone would, says yes to a private expedition with Trixie and she gets packing, she shows up outside the wagon and, I, uh, I forgot what I was saying, it was probably irrelevant, anyways, Starlight is a huge nerd and also prepares an inflatable raft which is completely pointless except for its use during the song montage later, Trixie and Starlight settle into the wagon and, Wait, if Trixie has so many of these identical gag magic wands, does that imply they are one use disposables or something? Seriously, why would she need so many? I'm sure a lot of the magic shit Trixie has is unnecessary or maybe just keepsakes, or maybe even just for show, because she can't possibly use all of it. We get some well done foreshadowing about the circumstances they will find themselves to be sleeping in later, but after that, they're off on the road. The road to friendship bwah ha 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 ha. I'm hilarious. <sighs> Thank goodness we're not like Twilight or the others. They'd probably sing a song about it. We're off. On the road to friendship. I cannot describe how grateful I am that Trixie got a song before the show ended. Even if this is hey reversed shit, it is impossible for me to watch this episode without smiling and singing along when this song plays. Honestly, I'd probably move this song significantly higher on my top 10 songs list if I ever revised it. Maybe up to top 5. It's just that fantastic. I love them so much. Weird. Bwahahaha wouldn't it be sick and twisted if I made a sex joke about that line?
That would be hilarious because sexual themes in a kid's show is funny. Fuck you Haber, you knew what you were doing all along, didn't you? You had to get your tainted fucking mitts on the show and ruin it forever. I hope you get your spine ripped out and sulfuric acid gets poured in the wound. Anyways, after the song ends, Starlight and Trixie arrive in Pony Arabia. Trixie, being incredibly frugal, aims to spend her money wisely and, and Starlight buys a fucking falafel. Because this is street food, it is incredibly overpriced and instantly bankrupts their entire expedition. I mean, do you know how expensive it is to get like, a shitty hot dog in DC? Or any big city, for that matter? Three dollars or more, and that shit's probably not even edible. Anyways, because they are tied on bits, Trixie decides to stand in a long line to get the cheaper hay cakes from the good hay cake stand. However, due to this, they are late to the hotel and when they arrive, every fucking hotel in the country is full and they have to sleep in the wagon. Also, I would like to point out that Trixie apologizes first in this episode, despite the fact that Starlight is the one in the wrong, but I'll get more into that later. They get into the wagon and holy shit I need this blanket. It's the kind of merch I could own and my family would be none the wiser because to everyone else it's just a blanket. Anyways, Starlight snores in her sleep and their solution to this plight is, uh, interesting to say the least. Okay, first, it is incredibly cute and endearing that Trixie talks in her sleep. Secondly, we know that soundproofing spells exist, so why the fuck doesn't Starlight, a retardedly powerful unicorn, cast one between the two of them? Every problem in this episode is caused or can be fixed by Starlight. Trixie did nothing wrong. Starlight and Trixie absolutely bomb their show due to anger and sleep deprivation, and the next night they are fighting over a single carrot and continuing to bicker endlessly. Trixie runs off into the night and when she comes back in the morning. Where's my wagon? I traded it to that pony from Saddle Arabia for his. Starlight has harnessed her griffin ancestry and traded away Trixie's wagon because it was too small despite the fact that it wasn't fucking hers to trade away. Now, I usually like Starlight. In fact, I like her in most of the episodes she appears in. I'm not one of the people who hates Poochie just because she exists. This is the exception. I fucking hate Starlight here. What she did was unforgivable. Also no, I am not biased at all. So Trixie and Starlight split up and Trixie meets Hufar and they quite literally have a competition to see who is more stubborn. Starlight goes on a journey back and realizes how shitty she was after she sees two cute mares bonding due to the impact of her and Trixie's song. She comes back to Saddle Arabia and I'd like to point out that Trixie has likely been sitting on the ground here for multiple days. This is the second point in the show where Trixie literally risks her life to make a point. This strike is badass, honestly. Starlight and Trixie sort of, like half make up over their fallout and Hufar just starts acting like a smug dick for no reason. He demands proof of friendship and Starlight and Trixie perform their truly iconic friendship chant which I, as a real fan, know by heart. Trixie and Starlight head back to Ponyville. Also, kidnapping. 10 out of 10 episode. I, I love, love them. them. <laughs>